Hey there, happy coders, and welcome to the next video in this, uh, I don't know, series of, of January videos I'm making. So January is an event that happens in January where every day you get a different prompt and you sort of use those prompts as inspiration to make some kind of generative art. Um, and there's lots of different examples. If you check out like the hashtag January on uh, social media, like Mastodon or whatever, you'll see a lot of folks um, uh, participating and, and posting their own stuff. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool. Um, so without further ado, um, today's prompt is made in 10 minutes. So a couple different directions I could take this. Um, one thing I was maybe thinking of doing was making a sketch that takes 10 minutes to complete. So kind of, you know, um, flipping on his head a little bit. And instead of me coding for 10 minutes, um, the, the code would take 10 minutes to run. And I thought about that for a little bit, but I think what I'm going to do is stick with um, kind of an old reliable for me. So there's a um, algorithm called a random walker, and it's my favorite algorithm. I have uh, implemented it in, you know, most languages I've used, and it's it's one of my go-to, like, if I'm just kind of doodling with, with code, it's, it's the thing that I um, kind of come back to uh, quite often. So lots of examples. I guess maybe I could just go to <laughs> examples that I have. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, here here's some examples of... Um, what I have done uh, with a random marker before, where it's just a line that kind of scribbles around the screen, and um, it, it kind of generates this like really cool pattern over time. So uh, here it is already implemented over here in, in P5.js. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself 10 minutes to sort of re-implement this, and I'm going to maybe walk through a couple of different ways that you can approach it, all done in in 10 minutes uh we're gonna see we're gonna see how it goes um but it's something i've done a lot so i'm hoping that it's kind of like the the idea of like a coding kata i think it's called where if you do it a bunch of times so you, you kind of get better at it over time but i'm just gonna play with it and see how it goes so first let's see what i want to do is bring up a timer and uh, hold myself accountable to um Just stay on top yeah okay uh, so i'm going to run this timer i actually don't know what this does when it goes off we're going to find out and uh, i'm going to open up my p5 editor and okay i haven't started yet here i am in the p5 editor and uh here we go 10 minutes ready start <laughs> uh so uh the sort of traditional way that i think about a random walker is first you have a point so I'm going to create an X and Y variable, and then maybe in setup, I'll say X equals width over two, start it out in the center, Y equals height over two. And then I'm going to draw like a circle just to get started, X, Y, and maybe a size of 25. Go to run that and just see, let me double check that that's working, and it is, and I realized that my dumb face is probably covering up the uh, timer. So I'll move it there, why not? Um, okay, so I've got a circle drawn on the screen, and that's all well and good, but it doesn't actually do very much yet. So um, the core of the random walker algorithm is that you move your point kind of randomly over time. So I'm going to add a random number between, say, negative 1 and 1 to both my y and or my x and y variables, negative 1 and 1. And now you'll see it kind of jitter a little bit. Um, and you can think of this as like... I don't have a pen, but you're holding a pen and you're just kind of wiggling it around the uh, canvas by drawing a little bit, um, a, a little bit at a time. So like moving the pen a tiny bit at a time and over time it'll kind of scribble. Now, I'm not doing that yet. Uh, so there's a couple things I can change to kind of make that happen. First, I'm gonna move my background call over up in here maybe. Maybe I'll say like background of background of me just to start just something kind of dark and now you'll see that uh, it's not quite beautiful yet because uh, it's, I've got like a black background on my circle and I'm drawing a circle instead of a point so maybe I will change my stroke to white and instead just draw like a point or maybe I'll draw like a tiny rectangle x y one one and um, actually let's draw a point and see what happens Sometimes I have trouble with points uh, for some reason, but let's just see what happens. 
And okay, yeah, it actually works. And if I zoom way in, you can see that it is indeed kind of drawing a point um, that scribbles along the screen. And that's that's good. I could sit here and wait, uh, but given my time limit, uh, next thing I'll do is I'll talk about like a trick that I play like with this uh, with this approach of of like fluctuating between negative one and one, and that is to uh, create a new draw function function. Actually, no, I'll do it a different way. Instead of creating a new function, I'll just throw this whole thing in a for loop. So I'm going to say for let i equals zero, i is less than 100, i plus plus. And what this is doing is it's kind of artificially increasing the frame rate by a factor of 100. So it's going to run 100 times faster based on this number. So now if I run this, now you see that the scribbling is, is much faster. This is a little bit more uh, interesting and more aesthetically pleasing. Um, the other way that you can kind of think about this is you can have like an if statement that chooses between four choices of either going up one, down one, left one, or right one. Um, the reason that this version is so slow is because this generates a lot of values like 0 0.25, 0 0.0001. Um, so it can take a few frames for the pixel to even move by, by one. So the other way you can do this is say like let r equals a random number between 0 and 1, random 1, and then I can say if r is less than 0 0.25, then x minus minus, else if r is less than 0 0.5, then uh, x plus plus. So I'm giving it like four different chances to, to go in four different directions, else if r is less than 0.75, then uh, y minus minus and else uh, y plus plus. So I'm always moving it by one, so I no longer need this. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm gonna run this and yeah, okay, maybe not a huge difference actually, um, but now you can see that it's like kind of in this grid format where it's always moving by one. So that's another way you can kind of think about it and I'm just about halfway done, so okay, here we go. Um, so that's another way to do it. So the first way was to have this like random plus random number between negative one and one. Uh, the other way is to split it up into uh, four uh, different options of up, down, left, or right. Um, so I think pick between those two, whichever one you prefer, it's all good. Um, but the third way, the way I'm gonna probably end up sticking with is to um, think about it in terms of not just moving the pen a little bit, but like picking a new point and then drawing a line between where you are now and where you wanna go. So let me fix up this code a little bit. So what I want to do is say like let next x equals x plus a random number, and I'm going to change that in a second, and then let next y uh, equal uh, y plus another random number. And these can be like instead of constraining it to negative one and one, um, this can be a lot bigger. So between like, let's say negative 10 and 10. So I'm gonna move my point by 10 pixels every time. And then what do I wanna do? I want to draw a line from x, y to next x and next y. And then finally, I want to say x equals next x and y equals next y. So it's another way to sort of generate that next point is to generate a point that's a little further away. So I'm gonna run this. And now you see that I am still scribbling around the screen, but it's jumping by a little bit more each frame, which has this, you know, a different effect that it's kind of up to you, whichever one you find more kind of aesthetically pleasing. Um, you can also increase this number to say 20 and it'll, you know, move even further. And again, totally up to you, whichever you think is, 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 is cooler. Um, so the, thing that's kind of obviously happening right now is that it's going off of the screen. So let me say like next x equals constrain next x between zero and width. So this will prevent my um, point from going off of the screen. Next y, uh, zero and height. And okay, so now my point will kind of be forced to stay on the screen even though I'm telling it that it can move randomly. I'm saying move randomly, but if you start to go off the screen, constrain yourself to, to staying inside the bounds of the screen there. Uh, okay, 
So those are a couple of different ways to approach the random walker algorithm. From here, lots of things you could do. You could play with the stroke weight, for example, and make that line a little thicker. But with three minutes to go, I'm gonna jump into the next thing that I always love playing with, and that is random colors. So very similar to what I'm doing with X and Y, I'm going to do the same thing with R, G, and B. So I'm gonna just create some variables. Let R, let G, let B, and I'm gonna start them out as random colors. So um, R equals random number between zero and two, five, five. G equals random number between zero and two, five, five. B equals random number between zero and two, five, five, okay? And then down here, when I say stroke, I wanna say stroke R, G, B. And even that itself will do something. It'll make my line a, a random color. So um, in this case, red this time, uh, sort of this blue color this time, and now another blue color, now greenish. So every time you run it, it'll be different, which is interesting enough. But what I wanna do is basically this exact same thing where I change my variables and then constrain them. So I'm going to say R, uh, plus equals a random number between, uh, let's say, negative 10 and 10. So I'm moving my R, G, and B variables uh, kind of randomly, exactly the same way as I'm moving my X and Y variables. And, okay, for the sake of time, I'm going to do some copy-pasting and then change this to uh, G and B, and then I need uh, to constrain it. So R equals constrain R0 and 255 to make it stay in between the sort of values that you need for colors. So R, G, and B, R, G, and B. Okay, I'm gonna save this and run this. Whoops, uh, fine. And now what you see is over time, my line is moving not just in X, Y space, so it is moving like around the screen, but it's also moving in RGB space. So the color is changing over time. And I really love this. This is, to me, uh, a really fun, uh, one of my go-to uh, sort of creative coding algorithms, just because, uh, I don't know, you can explain it in just a few words. So you start with the pen and you scribble it around the, the page and then you change the color of the pen over time. Um, so even with that like kind of simple rule set, it creates these like really cool kind of uh, emergent patterns that, you kind of can't predict ahead of time because it's all down to like the power of random. And I, I really love that. Um, whew, okay, so that was, that was a lot for 10 minutes. I'm kind of just uh, letting it run here for the next 30 seconds or so. Um, but from here, you could go back and you could play with the ideas of um, how you calculate that next point. So I gave you three options. There are others. Um, so you could add between negative one and one. You could pick like up, down, left, right, or like I did here, you can like create a new point, the next point. Um, and okay, three, two, one. Officially out of time, but I think we got it. Um, <laughs> Cool. Uh, so like I was saying, uh, you can go back and play with any of those three approaches for generating a new point, or you could come up with a new one. Um, so maybe you use like trigonometry to like move it around like a circle or something. Um, and you could also play with shapes. So I'm drawing a line or I drew points before, you know, you could draw circles or maybe this is a little bird flying around or a little bug crawling around the screen, eh, you know, go nuts. Um, you could also play with the idea of colors. So right now I'm using up like the entire RGB space. So I'll generate anything, uh, any color between like black and white, red, yellow, green, blue, all of them. Um, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want like only red and blue, for example. Um, it's always one of my go-to color palettes just because it's it kind of looks cool. Um, but this will uh, sort of create that same kind of um, pattern, but with a more restricted color uh, color palette. So that's one thing to play with or you know, there's lots of things you could do, um, but I, I tried to limit this to 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop rambling. Okay, so uh, if you found this code useful, I'll post a link somewhere uh, in the description, or if you're on Happy Coding already, you're probably already looking at it. Um, I also have already implemented this, implemented this over on Happy Coding like five times, so uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll figure out where to post it. Um, but if you found it helpful, uh, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Either leave a comment down below. Or if you're on Happy Coding, um, there's a comment section on every page. So, uh, sure. 
Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, you should see something that looks like this, where if you click here to add a comment, you'll be taken to the uh, Happy Coding Forum, where you can leave a reply and I'll see it that way. Um, or just come directly to the Happy Coding Forum and this is where I hang out the most. So I'd love to hear from you um, if you take this code and run with it. Uh, or if you do your own January thing, I'd love to see it. Um, so please reach out and let me know. Uh, but with that, that was the uh, random walker algorithm in, in 10 minutes for January 2nd. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, of course, happy coding.